Ian is incredibly clever, but he's got a very short attention span. He's extremely hyperactive. He cannot sit still for any length of time at all. So we'll get straight down to business. We'll start with a wave, I think, Miguel. Hopefully, if you all stick it out in the air and wave at him, you might get a wave back. Look at that. That's what we like to see. Give him a wave. Let's do it. He likes waving. Now, if he does anything well, if he just sits still, if you give him a round of applause, he responds very well to that. He likes to hear Here. It's based on a simple technique called positive reinforcement. Really simple. If the sea lion does something well, we reward them. The reward can be a piece of fish. That always works well, especially with this little fellow. He's got an incredible appetite for a small sea lion. He can easily eat 10% of his own body weight on a daily basis. But you can also reward them with attention. That's what they're after. They all want to be the centre of attention. They all want attention from the training staff and the audience. Believe it or not, every time you clap, you're actually helping me because he's learned to respond. They soon learn to respond to uh, applause from the audience. It lets them know they've done something well. If I say, well done, good boy, and give him a pat on the back, that's a reward too. But this is how we do all the training. Now, they can learn to respond to hand signals. A wave, a wave is an obvious one. But another couple that he responds to, uh, uh, this one, for example, if I hold out my hand, he'll touch my hand. We call that targeting. And it's just a way to get him to sit still for a second. If I signal with my left hand and say open, he opens his mouth like that. Open. Well done. And uh, that allows us to check his teeth and the vet too when he pays a visit. The whistle, that simply means well done. When he hears that sound, he knows he's done an exercise well. And he responds to a couple of words. They can't understand everything I'm saying, but like a dog, he will respond to his name and come when called. He will sit on command. And when I say the word kiss, I get a kiss like that. So he's listening and watching now. And uh, as I said, his attention span quite short. We have to keep them occupied though. If you leave them to just swim around, they get bored. And if boredom sets in, behavioural problems tend to develop quite quickly. So we give them toys to play with to keep them occupied. He had these hoops given to him to play with in the pool when he was a young pup. And he loved playing with them in the pool, but he developed a bad habit. He started throwing them around. And occasionally, somebody on the front row got a hoop between the eyes. <laughs> so we started practicing catching them. Are you ready, Miguel? He's got to catch them over his head. If he keeps focus, he's very good at this, because sea lions are naturally good at catching. Sit still. <laughs> they've got that long neck, and they've got brilliant eyesight. Doing well. Yes, they've got binocular vision. Binocular vision means they've got two eyes facing forward, like us, so they can judge distance and speed very well. Oh, Come on, a big round of applause if we get five out of five. Well done. That's it, excellent, that's it, that's back, well done. Another toy we gave him to play with when he was young pup is the basketball. And he started popping them at an alarming rate. So we've taught him to balance this ball on his nose. He's not great at this activity yet. It's still something we're working on every day. But he's getting better at it with practice. That's it, concentrate. This is where he the ball. Come on, bring it back in here for me. Now, uh, the young sea lions, they're all naturally very, very playful. But uh, learning to balance is something that can take some time. They've got to learn to use their whiskers to help them. Now it's all about practice, of course, and around his nose, now he's doing it on purpose, he's got to try You've <laughs> got to concentrate, you can do it when you concentrate, can't you? Go on, that's it, hold it until I blow the whistle. Now uh, the whiskers, they're not strong enough to hold the ball or actually move it, but his whiskers are all very, very sensitive, there's a strong nerve at the base of each one. So he's learnt over time to feel the ball with his whiskers. And when it moves just a millimetre in any direction, it's pressing against some of them, and he's responding by moving his head. So the hoop catching is all about vision, it's all about eye and muscle coordination. This has nothing to do with vision, this is all about those whiskers. You nearly dropped it there, but he's doing well. Now, if I tell you his record for holding the ball, this time last year was four seconds. He is improving day by day, and it's all about practice. Well done, little fella. That was a good one. Now, you saw him drop the ball a couple of times, and you will uh, hopefully have noticed we didn't punish him. Now, if you punish the animals for making a mistake, that's known as negative reinforcement. And I'll tell you for a fact, it doesn't work. If you uh, try to use that technique to train an animal, all you'll do is train them to bite you. 
if you punish them at all, they just dislike you, punish them a few times and they will punish you back. So every time you go near them, they either run away, swim away, or bite you, and then you can't teach them anything. So it's about rewarding them when they do well, and if they make a mistake, we just practice some more. Now, catching the ball on his nose, he couldn't do that just a couple of weeks ago, and he couldn't balance this ball either. He still can't balance this ball very well, but we've uh, recently swapped the basketball for this American football, this rugby shaped ball, and at first he found it incredibly hard to balance, but he can now hold it for just a few seconds, not really yet, but uh, it's a good opportunity for him to practice in front of an audience, and when he's concentrating, it will now stay there, but uh, he couldn't do this just a few weeks ago, it kept toppling one way or the other, but getting better at it, and we just kept, keep trying to find the new things to do, setting new challenges, with this one though, it's just keeping him focused. Well done, that's good. Right now, something he can do fantastically well, something he actually enjoys doing far more than any other sea line I've ever met, is the tower dive. Now, we built this tower over here uh, two years ago, and the moment we finished building it, the moment that bridge was in place, he was up the top of diving into the pool. So really, we didn't have to teach him to do this, he just did it of his own accord. Now the other sea lions, two of them still refuse to dive off the top of the tower. But Marvin will do it now, eventually, but it took two years of training to get Marvin to do this. Miguel, you love it, don't you? So let's see you diving off the top. He's absolutely fearless, this little fella. That is a big dive for a little sea lion like him. But he races up to the top, he pauses for a second, and he jumps! Get ready for a splash! <laughs> So go on, do it one more time, action replay. Now Tom Daly would be proud of a dive like this. When he first started doing this, he would do a belly flop and everybody got drenched all around the whole pool. But now he's learning to break the surface a little bit better. Right now, he is a, a bit of a challenge this one. He's a bit of a mischief on occasions, but he's done quite well today. And uh, hopefully, next time you come to visit, you'll see he's doing a little bit more, and you'll see his skills might have improved. Don't hold your breath, but we'll see. Uh, the next sea lion we're going to bring out is Merlin. He's a bit older, a bit uh, bigger than Miguel here. And Miguel just tries to wind him up if he's on stage at the same time. So he's going to disappear. Give him a clap as he leaves. Right, moving on to Merlin, who is a little bit bigger. Merlin was coming in this country in a long way. Three of the four sea lions bred here in Britain. Miguel bred in Barcelona too. This one is really, really smart too. And a bit more relaxed. He will sit still for more than a second. And he's learned to do all sorts in the time he's been here. He will not dive off the top of the tower yet. We've got him to climb up the tower finally, but won't dive off. Apart from that, he'll do everything that Miguel has just done and a whole lot more besides. Now Merlin, first of all, a big wave for everyone before we go any further. Big flipper shake for me, and a kiss. Wow, thank you. Now, you saw Miguel opening his mouth on this signal. We use a different signal for the other three sea lions. We touch them on the chin to get them to open the mouth like that. And uh, that's because if you touch Miguel on the chin, he bites his finger. Now, uh, Merlin here has also been taught to blow his nose when we touch him on the nose. There is a reason for this, they can suffer from infections in the nose and throat. So if you teach them to blow their nose, you can take a sample of what comes out. Yes, a snot sample. And uh, you can send this away to the vets to be checked out. If there are any nasty bugs or bacteria in that sample, we can give the sea lions medication, solve the problem before it gets serious. Now normally I'd use a sample dish to uh, take a mucus sample. I don't have one though, so he's got to blow his nose on my hand. Just to prove it to it. You love this bit, don't you? Nice and loud, blow. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. Thank you very much, Merlin. Now, uh, he can also hold all his weight on just these front flippers. The front flippers are incredibly powerful. Much more power and muscle in those front flippers than the back flippers, which are used to help them twist and turn in the water. But with one sweep of those flippers, they can glide for 100 metres, they can accelerate to about 20 miles per hour, and they can hold all their body weight on them. Shows your strength, he weighs 95 kilos in one. And uh, we'll show you his balancing skills. Now, Merlin, for ages, has been balancing a basketball, and to be honest, he's pretty good at it. But he can now balance this ball, and if he's concentrating, he can swim whilst balancing this ball. Whoops, he dropped it there. Let's see if you can get it back on your nose. 
try a bit harder. Now the difficult bit is getting him out of the water, onto his nose and balanced. Then the other difficult part of this exercise is getting out of the water without dropping it. Now it's on his nose, that's it, that's it. Can you get back up? Well done. They've got about 60 in total and uh, they vary in length, but each one touching that ball is helping him to do this. Now, uh, he's got to hold it again until I blow the whistle. Then we're going to make it even harder by turning the ball the other way around. Now, again, this is something he couldn't do just a few weeks ago. He's not good at that, so you deserve another clap, I think, before we... Now, people say the same thing to me every day. It's a magic trick, it's a circus trick. Now, this is nothing to do with trickery. It's all about practice. It's all about skill. And when you turn the ball this way around, it is incredibly hard to keep on the nose because it's only touching a few whiskers. One wrong move and it'll topple like that, but we keep practicing, don't we? And you're getting better at it. Hold it for three seconds. One, two, two and a half. You couldn't do that in two weeks. Right, he's going to show you his flexibility next by doing a backwards somersault. This shows you the flexibility in the spine. Now they can twist and turn really quickly. As we said, they use the back flippers to help them do that in the water. And they've got to be able to twist and turn to catch fish. But they have two predators in the ocean too. Where they're found along the west coast of America, three sharks prey on these animals. Tiger sharks, bull sharks and great white sharks. The other predator they face is the killer whale. Now obviously, if they're in the water and they spot one of those creatures, they get out of the water if they can. But if they're far out to sea, those predators can swim faster than a sea lion. So the chances are, if it was a race to the land, that they'd get eaten. But they can avoid attack by twisting and turning rapidly through the water. You'll see them corkscrewing, constantly changing direction if a predator approaches them. The predator can get confused and can often... Wait in the corner. <laughs> can often... This can allow the sea lion to escape, so we'll see that flexibility. Now he's just going to do a loop in midair in the middle of the pool. Can you do a somersault, Merlin? Go! Here he comes! Now! Whoa! Oh, 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 oh. We'll do it again. Do an action replay. Now this is the game took quite a long time to train. It's trained using something called a target, which is just a stick with a yellow spot on the end. Wait in the corner. <laughs> yes, the target is something we train them to follow with their nose. So they are trained to follow the yellow spot with the nose, then by circling it above the water about 15,000 times. Eventually, Merlin did this. Do it one more time. Can you do it even faster? Go! Action replay! Oh, no, Talking about. Just a stick with a yellow spot on one end. All we do is give them a piece of fish when they touch the yellow spot. Like that. The first time they put their nose there, they get a piece of fish. We give them a pat on the back, we say, well done. Do that a few times, and they begin to follow it with the nose like this. Up, down, left, right, in any direction. And uh, once they've learned to do that, you can teach them to do a somersault, because they'll follow it anywhere, and they'll follow it above the water as you circle it. If you put the target in front of them, they lean forward to touch it. And that's how you teach them they can stand on the front flippers. Any sea lion can do it, they just don't realise them. So you should. That's a little secret there in the training. Right, Merlin, uh, we have to explain the difference between a sea lion and a seal. People always ask me this question, if I forget to mention this in the show, how do you tell a sea lion from a seal? Well, the animals here are sea lions. They're so called, even though they have very little in common with lions, in fact, they've only got one thing in common with them, and that's the fact that they develop a mane, the male or bull animal, that is. This is fur covering most of the body, and around the neck area here, in later life, it becomes a bit thicker than the fur on the rest of the body. Only a bit thicker, but it can form a kind of mane. And somebody thought, right, let's call them sea lions. That's where the similarity ends. Some seals also develop a mane. So the way to tell a sea lion from a seal is not to look for that, but to look for their ears, because all sea lions have Little ears that stick out there, look, that's his ear, or one of them, and they stick out from the side of his head. They're not that big, but you can clearly see an external ear flap. On a seal, the ear is in the same place, but they don't have ears that stick out. A seal's ear is just a small hole on the side of their head. So that's one way you can tell them apart. The flippers next. Sea lions have big front flippers, we know that. They're very strong, very powerful. Seals have tiny front flippers that aren't very powerful at all. A seal front flipper 
only grows to the size of my hand when fully grown a sea lion's front flipper can be the length of my whole arm. And that's because seals actually use the back end of the body to power them through the water instead. And these animals can walk around on their flippers like this. Come for a walk with me, Merlin. He will walk on his flippers wherever I ask him to go. He can move quite fast. He can outrun me, which isn't hard. But look at how he's moving. The back flippers go underneath. The front flippers act like individual walking limbs. So sea lions on land are pretty fast. And because there are sharks and killer whales in the water trying to get them, in the wild, they spend most of the day out of water. It does them no harm at all to dry out. They are perfectly safe out on land because they've got no natural predators there. The predators they face both found in the water. So they spend a lot of time on land and they can move around quickly. Seals spend a lot of time on land too for the same reason. They can't move very quickly. Merlin, do your fantastic seal impression, please. This, everybody, is how a seal moves on land. And it's different from a seal on land. It's exactly right. They wriggle along, basically. They're rather slow. They can't move very quickly at all. They wriggle about on their belly by moving the spine in a kind of wave-like motion. They literally bounce along the floor like that. Good impression. Anyone told you they saw a clapping seal, they didn't. They saw a clapping sea lion. Seal flippers are too small to stand or walk on, so that's why they wriggle about like that. And their flippers don't meet in the middle, so it's impossible for a seal to clap. And then it gets confusing because you get certain animals called fur seals, which are very awkward animals indeed. A fur seal is the one exception to everything I've just said. A fur seal isn't a seal, it's actually a type of sea lion. But that's where it gets confusing, so we'll move on. <laughs> now, Merlin, you've come to this door. You know who's waiting behind this door. You probably don't. That's why you stood there. But you'll move in a minute, because here comes Clive. The uh, biggest of the sea lions here. Here's our alpha male, the boss. And he keeps the others in line, as you can see. Now, actually, he's pretty friendly. And the four we have here all get on pretty well together as a group. Merlin and Clive are uh, the best of friends most of the time. But for about four weeks in the height of summer, because he's fully mature, his temperament does change, he does become more aggressive. That's because his hormones start racing in summer, it's the breeding season. And although we don't have any females here to breed with, they still display the natural habits that they do at that time of the year. They'll push each other around, the males will battle to show who's dominant. But seeing as how he is bigger than the other three put together, it's not much of a battle. And the others soon uh, learn to back off from him at that time of the year. But for 48 weeks of the year, they're all great friends. Do I get a kiss, Clive? Wow, thank you. He's still in a good mood at the moment. We're still far from the height of summer, so he's still got quite an appetite. In the middle of winter, his appetite is incredible. Fish like this just disappear, like that, very quickly. He can get through 10% of his own body weight every day in the middle of winter. But for about four weeks in the middle of summer, he hardly eats a thing. In the wild, they can go for up to six weeks without eating at all during that into the breeding season. Now, at that time, he loses weight. At the moment, his weight is about 280 kilos, about 44 stone. But you can still do this. Go on, both do this together. The front flipper stand, any sea lion can do that. Even a big fella, like you are. Now, people ask me, how long does it take to train a sea lion? Well, you can't answer them, because they all learn at different speeds. You've seen him balancing a ball on his nose. He's good at it. Clive is... Clive has been practicing ball balancing for 18 years. And he can't do it. But he's kept him occupied trying. Now, none of the other sea lions, though, can do this. Show me your goalkeeping pose. Watch this, Merlin. You'll be able to do this one day. You've got to catch the ball with these flippers. It looks easy to us, but for a sea lion, this is really hard to do. They normally catch with the mouth, of course. Are you ready, Clive? Catch. Look at that. <laughs> But he's going to do something else to end the show, which is even more impressive, I think. He's going to end the show with the ball jump. And the ball in question is the yellow one above the pool. That is what he's got to jump up and hit. He's got to touch that ball with his nose. He's tried it twice today, and both times he's got a whisker to it. But if we're being brutally honest, Clive, on both occasions, You've actually missed, haven't you? And it's been a bit of a yeah. letdown. Yeah, we've been trying. Will it be third time lucky? We shall see. After the show, you can, if you want, buy a poster of him. We've got some pictures of him at actually hitting the ball. Including that one you can see there. Yeah, that's a good one. 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 Yeah, that's a good one.
just to prove he does it. We've got books featuring Clive, Merlin, Miguel and Marvin. And uh, we've got colouring books for the kids on sale. If you buy anything here at the, at the show, all the money goes back to the sea lions that you've just been watching. So it all helps these guys, it all pays for their everyday care. It mainly pays for that never-ending fish mill. Right, Clive, are you ready? We're going to give you a countdown. You've got to try and touch that ball. And we want to see you touch it with your nose, if you can. Let's give him a countdown. Are you ready? Watch this, Merlin. Don't put him off. You've got to concentrate. Three, two, one. Here he goes. Watch this. Oh. Really good. Let's do it again. Clive, that was a brilliant jump. Give him another one. Incredibly close. I think you're just about top there. Well done, mate. Now, if you do want to ask any questions after the show, please do come for a chat. We're going to be feeding the three sea lions you've just seen inside, so I'll be chucking some fish around in there. If you go through the doors, you'll see them a bit closer. You'll see them all racing around trying to get some fish before he eats it all. And do come for a chat. I'll be in the shop afterwards if you want to come and talk to me. But from Clive, Merlin, Miguel, and me, bye bye for now. Thank you. 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 Thank you.